What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be doing an oil filter housing gasket on this N55. Here we have my 2014 435i. Um, and as you can see, I have already removed the engine cover. And once, once I remove this intake, you'll kind of see a better idea of the leak that I have going on. So first thing we have to do is we have to remove these two lines. So to do that, we have to remove this T30 bolt as well as this 10 millimeter right there. And I have a cup to catch all any oil that comes out when I, when I pull this off. All right, so now that we've got this removed, you saw that there's there's some oil that came out. It wasn't too much. The cup actually worked out really well. Um, having this bolt right here removed, I'm able to kind of move this out of the way. So what we're going to do next is we have three E12 bolts that hold the front of the, the housing on. And so there's two here on both sides. And then you can't really see, even if I take this out of the way, it's going to be kind of hard to see with the camera. But there's one right in the center underneath as well. So you take those three out. So now I have the front of the housing removed and you can really see all that oil build up and it looks like right there it's it's probably a little difficult to see in the camera but you can the the gasket right here is all crushed and that would explain all the oil underneath and all the oil on the bottom of the unit itself so I'm going to clean all this up but we also have to get the rest of the the unit the the housing off the engine and replace the gasket on that as well. So what we're going to do next is before we can remove this housing is we have to take off this coolant line right here. All right, so now next step we have to do is remove the main oil filter housing unit from the engine. And as you can see, I've removed the the cap here and the filter and so now in order to get this unit off we actually have to raise the intake manifold a little bit we're not going to remove it completely but what we're going to do is remove seven fasteners along the intake manifold and pull it up off the studs just enough where we can access the one bolt that's hidden that's holding on this this housing so there's two bolts and there's seven nuts on this intake manifold that hold it on. What I did to get it off was I actually just used this two inch extension and I was able to easily get them all. As you can see, the studs right there, they've been removed. The hardest one was way in the back here. Let's see if you can see it. There's a little stud, it's a silver thing right at the tip of my finger. It's kind of hard to see in the dark, but there is a stud right there. So that one was a little difficult, but these wires that you have right here can be easily moved out of the way so you have access to them. So now that I've removed these fasteners, I'm gonna lift up the intake manifold a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to get to that, that last bolt. So now that we have the intake manifold lifted up a little bit, let's give you a visual. You can see the bolt is right in there and it's just completely covered when you have the intake manifold fastened down. So now that we have that lifted up, hopefully we'll be able to get to it. What I'm gonna use is, an extension hopefully it's long enough to reach it and then we'll have to take up this bolt right here which is the easiest obviously and then we have one right down here in the bottom so the problem with this one is you can't get a socket on it because of this this hose that's in the way so what we're going to do is we're going to use not necessarily the correct tool but i'm going to use an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench i'm going to try and get it on there and see if i can loosen that up and get that out So you can see the, the, the extension worked perfectly and you have enough room, you can squeeze that on there and you can get that bolt out there. So now you can see 
So now you can see we have the old unit removed. There is some oil right along the seam here and all on the bottom here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this up and then I'll show you a video of what the actual housing looks like and you'll see right on the bottom of the gasket that it was leaking right around this bottom area here as well. So I have the oil filter housing removed. There's the two gaskets. They're a little flat and it's kind of hard to see in the camera. I've tried to clean this up as much as I could. I have my two gaskets here and I also got new bolts from FCP. So I mean, you don't necessarily have to replace the bolts, but I mean, I think they were only two or three dollars a piece. So why not? All right, so now we have our two new gaskets installed and we're just gonna put everything back together in reverse order. All right, so just to know here, I feel like I probably moved the camera a lot. This was kind of a pain. So I, I installed the three bolts to mount the housing to the engine. And the one thing you want to make sure is that you don't tighten them down one by one. What you want to do is you want to put them in at least halfway so that you still have room to kind of maneuver this whole thing around. And what I did was I used the eight millimeter again on the back bolt because when I tried to use the socket at that weird angle, it, it didn't feel like it was really going in the right way. So I backed it off, loosened these other two bolts a little bit more, and I was able to tighten everything down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torque these to spec. I'm gonna include all the, the torque specs in the description as well as in the video as I go along, so. So once you have everything back together, you're gonna to fill the engine with fresh oil, you're gonna to top off your coolant, and once you top off the coolant, you have to do a procedure to bleed the air out of the system. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, so to bleed the air out of the coolant system, what you're gonna do is you're gonna switch the ignition on. You're not gonna start the car. And down here, what you're gonna do on your temp control, you're gonna put the fan to the lowest fan speed setting, turn the temperature all the way up to 84, and what you're going to do is you're going to push down the gas pedal for 10 seconds and then let go. And then if you check in the engine bay, you'll actually hear your water pump going. And so you'll wait 10 minutes and all the air should be completely bled from your system and you should be good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. So the last thing I do want to touch on is the oil priming procedure. So I just want to say that I did not do the oil priming procedure. I've driven well over five hours worth of drive time and I have no issues with my engine. So if you're not familiar with this, BMW released a bulletin saying that you had to prime the oil system after doing the oil filter housing gasket to prevent a, a spun bearing in seizing your engine. So I've done tons of research. People have said that they don't do it and the engines are fine. I've read some people say that 
they didn't do it, but they drove 20 minutes and then all of a sudden their engine seized and the engine was basically dead. So do your own research if you want to do it or not. Uh, in my case, the one thing I did do was I poured a half a quart of oil into the housing itself before putting in the filter and the cap. And doing some research on that, it seems like someone was saying that the oil would go then straight to the oil pump and it should technically prime the system and prevent the, the oil pressure from decreasing and, and allow the engine to have oil pressure almost immediately, preventing any sort of seizing. So again, that's just based on the research I did. I didn't do it and it ended up being okay, but I do it at your own discretion uh, and what you feel comfortable with. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.